Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. This is Data Engineer One, showing you guys how to write better data pipelines. In today's episode, we're going to be covering how to set up your PyCharm IDE to work beautifully with Kedro. There's a lot of cool features that the Kedro team has been working on, and I just want to show you guys this one really cool one. It's right here, the Kedro Catalog YAML Auto-Completion. It's super cool, super useful, just came out, um, and I'll show you guys uh, in this video. Uh, so this video really came about uh, as a result of some of the questions that I've been receiving on the channel. Uh, one question in particular, someone was asking, oh, why is it that uh, Vim uh, is is used by you like often? Do you believe that data scientists and data engineers should be using Vim to do their work? You know, should you learn Vim basically? Um, personally, I think that Vim is a super duper useful tool. Like especially when you have to do a lot of SSHing or you want to go to like a lot of remote machines or you might not have control over that environment. So having Vim available to you is just it's just fantastic to have. However, as a IDE, like an as an integrated development environment, I wouldn't necessarily re recommend vanilla Vim. I know there's a lot of plugins for Vim, uh, but in terms of like vanilla Vim, wouldn't recommend it. And that's because as Python projects grow and kind of like sprawl, it becomes very difficult to control without extra tooling around it. So that's why I personally really love PyCharm. PyCharm is my go-to uh, IDE for Python work, and I hope you guys uh, really like PyCharm too, because that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to be doing um, is make sure that you are uh, updating your, Ke your Kedro installation. So make sure that you do a pip uh, install-u Kedro. And that's because um, the new version of Kedro that just came out, which is 0 0.16.1, uh, is uh, incompatible with some of the older versions of Kedro projects. So make sure you update and we can create a new project today. Um, and just a quick note, I think it's kind of incredible that the uh, that just two days ago, I released a video regarding uh, 0 0.6, um, I'm sorry, 0 0.16. Uh, and now there's already 0.16.1. So it really is a testament to the Kedro team uh, and their, their, their true passion for their project. Uh, okay, so we have PyCharm intro. I created it with a default pipeline. That's just to make it easier for us. Um, and here's where I would normally also create a virtual environment for ourselves, virtual environment F. Um, but what we can do is we can actually use PyCharm to do this for us. So if we go ahead and open PyCharm here, um, if you have the command line tool installed for PyCharm, you can just use charm dot. Um, otherwise, you can open up your PyCharm and go to your, um, just like open the project using the folder. Um, and the way the, 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 the OS that I'm using here is obviously Mac. Uh, these instructions will work on Mac as well as Linux, um, but in terms of Windows, is a little bit different. And I unfortunately don't have a Windows machine handy uh, at this time, but um, at the very least, uh, the Mac and Linux people will be happy with this project. <laughs> okay, so here we have our PyCharm intro Kedro project. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. Um, so the first things that we need to do is we need to set up an execution or set up an interpreter. So you can see in the instructions here, um, this is the very first step that they do. Uh, in this case, what they're using is they're using a conda environment, but for our purposes, we're just gonna be doing it inside of a virtual environment. Why are we doing virtual environment? Mainly because I like virtual environment personally. Uh, so if you go over into the PyCharm settings, you can go down to your project, um, your project configuration here, and you can click on Py Project Interpreter, just like in the instructions below. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to create a new uh, Project Interpreter, and we can create this one here, a virtual environment right inside of PyCharm. Uh, and the reason why you want to do this, it makes it a little bit easier because it creates some default settings uh, for your virtual environment that PyCharm uses. Um, so one of the settings being um, and so actually, oh, I'm so sorry. It was a little bit out of screen, but what I did is I clicked over here and then I clicked add when I did that. So I clicked add uh, and then I created that virtual environment, that new one, and I clicked okay in the bottom right-hand corner. And the reason why you wanna use that is because it comes standard that you have to ignore this virtual environment. So if you notice that the folder color is red and what that means is that we're actually marking this directory as ignored or excluded 
from PyCharm um, from the PyCharm uh, indexing. Uh, and so what that does is it does it makes it a little bit easier when you, for example, do like a command F or something when you want to search for something within the entire within the entire uh, project. It will exclude the virtual environment and all the extra libraries that are inside of there, so you don't accidentally like search through those libraries when you're trying to find something in your project. Uh, that's one example of the things that it does. So that's why it's really nice. You can also do this manually. If you go in, let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see. If you right click on the folder and then you can go down and scroll down all the way to where it says mark directory as, and then you hold that and then it'll have uh, your options here. So let's go ahead and cancel exclusion so you can see what that looks like. We can right click and then we go down to, let me right click a little bit to the left, right click. Uh, and then you go down to mark directory as, and then the mark directory as will come back with sources, roots. Sorry, that's just a little, little touchy. Sources, root, or excluded. In this case, we're going to exclude the virtual environment folder. Um, but in the other case, as I'll show you right now, we're going to actually keep the source root. So if we go inside of source right now really quickly, we'll see that there's a few problems. So if we open up our pipeline, um, uh, immediately PyCharm is screaming at us with this red color. It's, it's saying like, what's going on? I don't know what a Kedro is and I don't know what a PyCharm intro is. Like, what the heck am I doing here? Well, actually this is super makes sense. Uh, we actually don't have Kedro installed because we created a new virtual environment. So in order to install Kedro, super easy. You just hit uh, Alt Enter. This is the default shortcuts for PyCharm. And then you can click right here, install package Kedro. Uh, we are actually going to have to do a little bit more than just installing the basic Kedro package. And that's mainly because um, we're also utilizing the Pandas package. And so the way that Kedro installation works now is that they kind of broke it up a little bit. Uh, and that's in order to keep your virtual environment sizes small. And so we have to install Kedro and then we actually have to install a separate uh, Kedro Pandas package. And so that's something that we can do um, right after we finish installation here of our Kedro. Uh, in order to uh, address this issue with PyCharm intro, what we can do here is we actually, the reason why eh, the reason why PyCharm is, is kind of uh, unaware of PyCharm intro, even though it's clearly right here, is because it doesn't know that this source directly, this SRC, even though it's called SRC, is our source's root. So we actually need to mark that as source's root. So very similar in the, in the fashion that we did earlier, we're gonna right click this guy, we're going to scroll down here and then click mark directory as, and then you want to mark directory as sources root. So we're going to click that, boom, like this. And then it sees that PyCharm intro is in. Kedro is also now part of the project, which is also great. Uh, let's go ahead and start up the terminal here. Uh, it'll actually open up a terminal in your local directory. Uh, in this case, um, what, what PyCharm will normally do, this is probably what it did on your machine, is that it will automatically um, create, uh, it'll automatically source your virtual environment, meaning that it'll automatically set the paths correctly to point towards your current virtual environment. Uh, mine is not set up to do that. Uh, so instead, what I have to do is I have to type in source them, which is the virtual environment folder, bin, activate. And so again, these are the commands that you use on a Mac or Linux machine um, in Windows is a little bit different. So now that we have our virtual environment activated, we just type in pip install Kedro and then the package that we want. And in this case, we want to get the pandas package. So this allows us to open um, CSV files, open uh, Excel files using the pandas package inside of our catalog. And if you take a look inside of the catalog, you will see that we do use the pandas package right here inside of the catalog YAML. And here it is, pandas CSV data set. Okay, so now that covers setting up Python, uh, creating the uh, directories. Now what we wanna do is we're gonna set up our run configuration. So this is the exciting part here where we can actually use PyCharm to run our Kedro code. So it's very simple. What you want to do after you set up your interpreter, you go to your configurations in the top, you click on the little plus sign, and then we're going to click on Python. Uh, so the instructions here are a little bit different. What they're asking you to do is they're asking you to find your built-in Kedro, but because we installed it inside of a virtual environment, it makes it a little bit easier for us. And so the, the, the instructions change just a tiny bit, but here we have Kedro run, and instead of script path, what we're going to use is module name. So what's going to happen is it's going to run this module, and the module that we're going to use, of course, is Kedro. So it's very similar to if you were to open up the command line and type in Python dash M Kedro, and then it'll run the module Kedro. 
And the parameters we're going to add is just the run parameter. Um, this is also where you would do something like run dash dash pipeline is equal to DE or something like that. We can go ahead and leave that in here uh, just as an example. Uh, and then you want to make sure that you set your working directory. So make sure that the directory is the current directory. So in our case right here, that's the PyCharm intro directory. So we click OK and open. And then that's all we need to do in order to get a, a Kedro run. Uh, so now we also have the Kedro um, pandas package installed. So we're good to go. Let's go ahead and give it a try by clicking the run button here. And what should happen is it should run the package right here for the, the DE pipeline and not necessarily the DS pipeline. So we click that run button on the top right hand corner. We can see it's going through. The command that it's using is Kedro run pipeline DE. And as you can see here, it only runs the data engineering pipeline. Super nice, very quick and easy, um, fantastic piece of uh, software there. Uh, now the real benefit of Kedro inside of PyCharm is the ability to add breakpoints. So let's go ahead and open up one of the nodes here. So our data engineering node, and we can see this is our data engineering node. And so say for example, that you're having like a strange bug with the node, you're like not too sure what's really going on. What you can do is you can tie it, you can click right here next to whatever line is giving you issues and click right there and you can add a little breakpoint. And with this breakpoint, PyCharm, upon running your Kedro code will actually stop at this point and you can do your investigation on exactly what variables and what things are available uh, and, and perhaps debug and figure out exactly why things are broken. And this is such a super powerful feature of PyCharm and of any kind of integrated development environment uh, that makes them so, so powerful when doing this coding stuff. And so you can see here, um, not only did we stop execution on this line, but it shows us all the variables that are available to us in terms of like the data, for example, as well as the example test data ratio, which comes in as one of the parameters up here. Um, and not only that, but we can go ahead and step through, right? Um, and like, you know, step through and execute that one line. And then suddenly we have this end test uh, variable that has been set. And you can even right click here and modify the actual value. So instead of doing n test 30, we can do something like n test 50 or something. And then we can go ahead and execute the rest of the code and it'll run with that updated variable. So a lot of super cool stuff that you can do with this. Um, and so finally, what we're going to be covering here, we covered debugging. So I'm going a little bit faster than I'm scrolling down. Uh, but finally, we're going to actually skip the remote SSH terminal. And then we're going to show you guys my favorite feature. It's Kedro catalog validation. It's autocomplete for your Kedro catalog. And it's so, so nice. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So going inside of the catalog YAML file, right? Some of the issues that we're encountering, you know, when you want to write stuff, like you want to say like, oh, this is a new data set to go through. And then you're like, okay, well, what are the parameters that I need to type in? I think it was like type or, you know, like tip, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can go wrong here. You have to like keep going back with your references and stuff. Well, the Kedra team just recently showed off this feature, which allows you to instead uh, specify a schema. So if you look down here in the, in the bottom portion, this little button that says no JSON schema, we can actually add a JSON schema. So PyCharm has this great built-in support for schema files for your YAML files. So you can actually enforce a schema standard and it allows you to do your auto completion. So let's go ahead and add the schema file in this case. And so Kedro has this really cool schema here. Um, it's right here. This is what it looks like raw. And uh, this is available to you guys. Uh, actually, truth is that in the documentation at the time of recording this video, the link on the Kedro documentation right here is actually incorrect. Uh, I'll give you the correct link uh, in the description in this video. So just keep a note of that. If you try to use this link that's available like right below, this is actually not going to work. You have to go into the description of this YouTube video in order to use the correct link. Okay, so we go down here where it says no JSON schema. We click on this and we click new schema mapping. Go ahead and click new schema mapping. And we're going to make a new Kedro vanilla catalog schema right here. We just go ahead and pass in that URL. Um, again, the URL below inside of the instructions is incorrect. 
the one in the description is the right one. You click OK, and so what is going to happen is it's going to use the schema on the catalog YAML. We click OK, and then suddenly, as you can see, as soon as I type in the letter T, we have all of the available properties that we can set for this configuration. So in this case, we're going to use the type, and then it also shows us a collection of all the different data sets that we can that we can create using using the catalog. This is just so cool. Uh, and so something that I'm really interested in, and I think you guys are interested in too, is this API data set. So this one I'm really excited about using. Um, so if we click enter here, we can create the data set. But as you can see, PyCharm is giving us a little bit of a warning. It's saying like, hey, wait a second. You know, this is a little bit incorrect. Something's wrong. It's like, oh no, well, what's, what's wrong, PyCharm? You highlight and it says, oh, we're missing a required property. And so this is such a uh, this is such a powerful feature because we, it saves us so much time from having to go to the documentation, figure out what are the parameters that we need to add in this catalog. It actually shows up right here. And so instead, what we can do is we can highlight this guy and we can click add missing property. So we click here and it has the URL as a missing property. And then we can add something like google.com. And then voila, we've already created our brand new schema and we're good to go. Uh, okay. Great. So thank you so much for taking a look. I hope this has really helped you guys create some pie charm, love, and you know magic with your Kedro. Uh, and again, if you guys enjoy this content, and I, make sure that you give me some comments. I really love feedback. I really love answering your guys' questions. And let me know if there's a way that I can help you guys write better data pipelines. But for now, if you enjoyed this, button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. Okay. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Goodbye.